Let me see if I can figure this out real quick. Hello, Donner Pass Whiskey. I'm trying to get this so I can at least be able to see on the computer the screen. Anyway, what I'm going to do in my goal for this afternoon, and I'm sorry for the echo, it's just the hardwood floor and the dining room. It's just nature of it. it's always echoey in here enough. But it's the best place. It's raining and storming outside, so. But anyway, what I have is an Eagle Rare, 10 year, still got the 10 year age statement on there. And it's a 2014 bottling. I've labeled them both as such. And then I've also got this Eagle Rare here. And that one is a 2012 bottling. So what I want to do is well, make sure I got them in the right thing here. Okay, it's got a two on the bottom of that. I just want to do kind of a sort of a blind comparison between the two because they are single barrels, so we do expect them to be different. And that's what we uh, going for. And there's a four on the bottom of that, and that'll be for the 2014. I just kind of want to do a simple comparison. I got these two glasses at an estate sale. I like them because they're colored glass. And, uh, and they allow you to, uh, to not really see the liquid color so much. So you wouldn't be affected, affected by, whew, that's close. Anyway, anyway, do that so that'll, That'll be that. It's going to kind of be blind, even though it's probably a useless point. I want to do it anyway real quick. I'm just going to spin these a few times. And I'm not even going to just, just give it a little bit of a spin. There's no way I'm going to remember it anyway. But I just kind of want to see. And it's not so much to say if I can pick out the 2012 from the 2014. It's more or less I just want to see what... What is the differences between the two and and which one do I really like the best? So, you know, if you go into this, uh, the 2012 naturally looks lighter than the 2014 until you turn them sideways. That black label there, it tends to give it that, make the liquid look darker than it really is. So anyway, it is what it is. But I just kind of want to do it. So I've already did, done a uh, comparison. It was with the 2012. And I haven't, in, in all honesty, I haven't had either one of these in a month, I bet. Yeah, it's probably been a month. <clears throat> so, and I've did that on purpose because I knew I kind of wanted to do this. Oh, this one is much more richer. This one here, less rich, but more oak on this. This one here has more oak influence on it. This one here has more More caramel. It's 
a little sweeter. <coughs> that one's sweeter. This one is more oaky. But the underlying the underlying smell underneath it all, once you get past those two points, is virtually the same. It's not completely the same. That's the two noticeable differences right off the bat that I notice. Hmm. A little more spice with the with the more oaky one. A little more wood spice. And this one, but the spices are the same. I want to say that up front. The spice level is quite really the same. Nutmeg and black pepper. Maybe a, more nutmeg than cinnamon to me, but there's not a lot there. Really more black pepper than just about anything. Hmm, it's interesting. It has the oak influence, it has the oak wood influence, it has the black pepper, but that caramel lies right underneath with that one. That caramel starts to come to the forefront quite quickly with that one. This is more spicy on the palate than that one is. It brings a lot of black pepper. The nose, this one comes across more oaky, but on the palate, this one comes across more balanced between the sweet and the spice. Definitely black pepper. A little nutmeg. And the oak tannin is there. Not in a bad way at all. They're definitely, you know, you're not going to expect a lot of difference in between them. But the, hey, hey, Jason Coates, and my bourbon journey, nice to see you too. But, uh, definitely more. This one starts off sweeter in the nose than this one. This one starts off woodier in the nose. But this one, the minute, this one gently brings the car caramel behind it and it stays woody in the forefront. This one here, it, it's more balanced. The caramel and the wood really work really well in unison together. There's a nice spiciness to this one that just, is a good level spiciness. This one, more transitions, but less balanced. That's weird. And, but but we, we got to remember, we have a single barrel product. Both of these are single barrel products. Both of them are just two years apart, roughly, in, in age date. And the labels, you can tell this is the older label, this is the newer label, and even the newer label don't have the tin up there no more. Uh, I don't know which one of these is which. I'm going to make the... Because I haven't had them in a while, and they're really close, but if I remember right, and I'm probably going to be real wrong on this, it's very possible, but this one here... 
has definitely, if I remember right, this one was more balanced than this one, so this one should be in that one. And if it is, it's just by coincidence because I spun the little doohickey here several times. I have no way of knowing. I'm not that talented. <laughs> and if I turn out to be wrong, it's really going to be bad. That one is better than that one. Because as it lingers in the finish, the black pepper and the nutmeg, it starts off with those in the finish, and then the caramel starts to show itself with the oak there right there at the end. And it's not very tannic. This one seems a little more tannic than this one. Yes. Much more tannic on that one. That is, that is pretty good. Again, for those just joining, I'm in my, there's a lot more tannins on this one. I'm in my kitchen. There's going to be more echo. Can't help that. Again, this one is so much better on the balance end. It's not to say this one's bad. This one's good. But it just, what I'm doing this more than anything is just, just to kind of give us an idea of the difference in the single barrels. And it's very evident when you sit down and do it. Especially you blindfold yourself, spin it a few times. I got this little carousel from my wife in there. She had all of our stuff in there, so I just took all that, kind of stole it from her. Anyway, it's being repurposed. <laughs> but it's, it's, they're very good, very interesting. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I might as well do the reveal because ain't no sense in letting it linger on anymore I'm going to say this was the 2012 because if my memory serves me correct this one was the more balanced of the two so I'm going to stick with that and I'm wrong I'm real wrong. Four is 2014. Holy smokes. Like I said, I haven't had them for a month. We're working on what I think I remember. That is interesting. I never get this stuff right. Very rare. Very rare. It is so humbling. So very humbling. Wow. Like I said, they're both good. For what it's worth, I got two more bottles of this one. Because I really like it too. And I think I have one more bottle of this one. Wow. So this one is, the 2014 is the more balanced of the two. And then it's, like I said, again, it's not to say this one's bad. It's just different. This one's more tannic. It's, it's just a little, a little bit more tannic, a little less caramel, and the balance is kind of skewed a little bit. The transitions on this one now, it's more of a step-by-step -step transition on your palate. This one kind of brings a lot of things at once, but in a balance, if that makes any sense. And it's thundering again. Hmm.
Well, guys, it's again. There's nothing wrong <laughs> with that one at all, really. This one edges it out, but they're still both good. Eagle Rare is good. You gotta like Eagle Rare. You really do. Just some sprinkling up there. Oh, we got hail earlier today, Jason. I had to have my truck out back, and uh, marble-sized hail came down. That was all about between 12 and 1 o'clock. It was a... Sat out there and just look at my truck and go, Oh, don't get no bigger, please. <laughs> don't, don't need no new dents. I got a couple of dents, little ding dents in it already. Two, last year's from last year, actually. But that's neither here nor there. So if you guys haven't tried Eagle Rare, which I imagine everybody watching this probably has, I've never had... A store pick on the Eagle Rare. I've got these two and other ones similar because I like them. They only had two left on this one. That's why I bought both of those, after, especially after I tried that one. And this one here, same reason. Bought it just because it was good. Eagle Rare is good. It's and all you know, and it's still aged ten years. They just took the single barrel off of it. And it's just, uh, it's a quality, it's a quality bourbon. It really is. And for the price range, I paid 32 bucks. And up there in far western Kansas and a lot of liquor stores, the $32 is what you pay. They've already factored in the tax. So that's an after-tax price. They just even it out. So and a lot of the stuff I buy, especially up there, like four out of five liquor stores is all the same way. They just go ahead and factor tax in. What you get put on the bottles, what they're selling it for. Which is nice. And you don't see a lot of, especially things that linger on the shelf, you don't see a lot of fluctuation in prices in the stores that do that because they don't go back and, and refigure their prices for current prices. Very rarely. Sometimes I think they probably have, but it's been my my uh, experience they have it so both of these came from up in that direction in Kansas around here you you can find the new bottles occasionally mostly you have to go to Wichita to get Eagle Rare you don't see it in the little towns around Wichita very much I've never have and it doesn't tend to last long on the shelves when you do see it there it's pretty it's pretty rare actually you know, let's do something else, too. Because I bought these, like I said, I bought these glasses at a yard sale. And I would like to know the difference in delivery between the little slight tulip-shaped wine glass. And I bought them because the coloration allows me not to determine dark versus light. Actually, I get a little bit more alcohol vapors. And this is the less concentrated than I do with this one. I still get the, the slight tannic for it, but I do get a little bit more caramel in the nose than I do with this one. Hmm. There is a decided difference just in the nosing. I can't see the palette changing, honestly. Maybe if this one holds in the vapors because of the narrowness, but I think that's probably a very minute difference between the two, something that we wouldn't normally notice. But in the nosing end of things, like everybody says, Glen Karen noses better. And I've got a couple of those Glen Cairns basically that are on stems too, and I like those as well. They're a little smaller, so you get a little less sample. Now it's changing because it's been in the glass long enough.
Mm. Palette, no difference. But the flavor is starting to alter a little bit with these. You are starting to get now with a little more time. It's starting to become more balanced. There's, be, there's a little bit more. Starting to get slowly toward there. The caramel starting to become a little richer. There's less in the 2012 bottle than the 2014. So technically it should have a slight bit more oxidation in it. But I'm not sure that's really going to factor too much because they've been open within a month of each other. So I don't really think that's an issue. And I don't think bourbons oxidize quite as heavily as scotches do. And even then, some scotches don't oxidize that much. I, it's a combination of, I think, how the cask is treated it. Depends on how the oxidation occurs after they bottle. I mean, I, I mean, I'm probably, I don't have no facts to back that up or anything. I just have what I've kind of noticed. But I noticed some older scotches, they oxidize a little quicker, but they tend to mellow out versus versus uh, younger scotches. I don't know how to say it. Younger scotches don't tend to change. I, I, the Macallan 12, I, I've had one open before. I, well, actually, I finished it and got a new one. But I had it open for a year, and I noticed absolutely no change from day one to the last day I drank it. And it was open at least a year. I've got another one down there open just as long. And I, the younger scotches, I don't notice the changes on that much. The older scotches, they will change rather quickly. If you're going to notice a change, it's going to be within the first two to three weeks, depending on how much you drink. Then after that, it seems to kind of slow down and not really run into any effect for quite some period of time, especially on the younger scotches. On the older scotches, they do tend to slowly start to change as they oxidize more and more. And But they never, I can't give you a long period of term because even like the Deanston 30, it didn't last long enough to have that. So I have no long-term experiment. And we'll leave that up to the Scotch Test Dummies and what they're doing. So what have I missed? Yeah, spring is officially here. I've got a store pick and I'll trade you for one of yours, My Bourbon Journey. Uh, send me an email. Uh, or I'll send you one and we'll talk about it. I might be able to do something there. Yeah, it would be nice if it was 100 proof. I agree with you, Donner. I really do. And even even uh, a little more would be better, I think. In all honesty, if you brought it up to maybe even 107, like uh, either the Bakers or the uh, uh, Weller, I think that would even... Maybe it would make it too close to Weller in flavor. I don't know. The Weller 107. I think the Weller 107 is a little younger overall, but I don't think it would hurt it. You're going to get a little more age with this one than you will the 107. And I really like the 107, so I don't know if there's a big difference in the uh, mash bill or not that would change. But it's, it's an interesting thought. It really is. It really, really is. Yes, Jason, you're right. It's it's a, one of the better sub-50% bourbons on the market. So. And that's more. <laughs> and they were to more oxygen. <laughs> than the last ER. <laughs> Everybody's different there, for sure. But yeah, I got a 2012 and... Uh, I'll just send you a message. I think I got you on, uh, I think if you're on Instagram, My Bourbon Journey, I'll DM you on there. We can talk about it more there. Well, guys, I won't be on here forever. So I just enjoyed it. I wanted to do a quick just a quick uh, live stream. I don't do many live streams, so I want to try to start doing a few more. 
I don't really got a set night because it depends on my work schedule, depends on what nights I have free. It's not something that I can really plan. Usually Mondays are always good for me, but not, it's never a true guarantee. But, uh, so like, like this last Monday, I couldn't have, but, uh, Tonight was a good night. I ain't, uh, ain't going to do no filming. Listen to my talk. Listen to me talk. I can't do no filming outside, and I've got to get some more uh, get some more reviews filmed so I can get them edited for you guys. Cause I'm out right now. I did my last one, the uh, '86 the other day, that old Forster. That's another thing. You can't compare. I know I'm going off on a tangent again, but Eagle Rare is not a rye bourbon and I don't think it is I don't think about it no I don't think the Eagle Rare is the right mash bill but I may be wrong about that but it's not the it's not got the it's not got the old Forster 86 was better than the 100 to me and it was actually less proof and I, another guy told me here a while back he said he thought I might have got a bad bottle of that 100 signature but I don't want to spend the money to find out. I just, I didn't care for it. I you know. But I think this is a whole lot better. And it's only $10 more. I mean, $12 more when you can find it. Some people that really, you know, they go $20 and they say, well, that's just, that's all I need. I mean, if that's all you're looking for is just bourbon flavor and to get hammered or something of that nature. Or if you're going to use it to mix. Now, if you're going to use it to mix... The, the, the floral notes in the old Forester would really work great in a lot of mixed drinks. Better than this, I think. But I think comparison-wise, I mean, I don't got any of the signature series or whatever they call that, the, the Rose series or whatever it is. I only got one. I got the 1910 and I bought it a month ago. I have yet to open it. Uh, but I've never tried the 1920, 1897, 1870. I've never tried any of those. I have no comparison basis for that. For, for that two back to the old Forester. The only two old Foresters I've had is those. And they're so near to Woodford Reserve that a lot of ways the characteristics carry over. Anyway, I, I'm digressing too far down another rabbit hole. Uh, Anyway, if you guys haven't had it, yeah, I, I got a regular review out on it that's more in-depth than what I'm doing here. This was not meant to be in-depth. It was just meant to be, is there differences and what kind of differences are there in the single barrels and how vast of a difference are there? And there is differences you can notice between the barrels and you expect to notice them between the barrels. But I think overall, they are still similar in a lot of ways. I think the delivery of what you get is slightly different between them two, between the two. And that's just how each barrel is different and reacts with the whiskey inside. And the 14 is, according to my palate now, is much more, much more balanced than the 12 is. Yeah. But the 12 gives you more changes, I think, through the palate than the 14 does. So which do you prefer? Balance right up the front, or do you prefer something that's going to change slowly as it goes through your palate? And that's an individual choice. Everybody's different. Well, guys, I need to get off here. Weller 107 is a weeder. Yes, it is. Uh, the 1910 is sold out. Yeah, it's solid. I'm sorry, solid, but the 1920s, I must try. I, someday I'll get to, someday I will. I've just, I was so put off by old Forster Jason, that's why I've avoided it. And that's the truth. Joy Deagle Rare, I have to get to get another bottle. Yeah, Dan, it's it's worth getting a bottle for. It's I mean, it's it's just a good solid bourbon. It really and truly is. You guys are probably hearing my wife in the other room. Yeah, I found the nineteen ten in Pittsburgh, Kansas, very southeast Kansas. I took the wife down there for a for a conference and I snooped around the liquor stores and when I did I found a bottle of the 1910 and I hem hawed around about it because they had something else I wanted and so I finally just can't only buy so much I bought the 1910 and ran with that I know Pittsville used to live in Joplin yeah 
I don't, that's really only the second time I've ever been to Pittsburgh. I know south and east of Pittsburgh better. I have an aunt, well, she's passed now, but an aunt and an uncle and a bunch of cousins that live down there toward Columbus, which isn't very far from Pittsburgh. They didn't actually live in Columbus. They lived in a little town called West Mineral. But, and I still got a couple of second cousins that live there still. But I haven't seen them in years. So, Smashville number one. Another year since in, in, where I think it did change somewhat every time. Yeah. Could have been a quicker girl. Well, you guys, I didn't catch everything you guys was talking about. Okay, I see your real email. I need to, let me write that down so I can, I didn't see that. I'm sorry, Donna. I was not paying attention. I mean, my bourbon journey. My bourbon journey zero one at gmail.com. No, that's easy to remember. I'll give you a holler after this is done. I'm going to send you an email. All righty. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. So that way. I don't know if you wanted it out there or not. I didn't see it and I shouldn't have been paying more attention. This is kind of a hard thing to do. Two computers. This is not easy for me. I'm not that, not that, uh, not that savvy, I guess. Oh, Forster 1920 is great. Hey, Oklahoma kid, how you doing? You just need more practice. <laughs> yeah, I need a lot more practice, Jason. That's for sure. That is for sure. Well, I tried to stop this twice or three times. I need to get off here so you guys can get about your evening. I enjoyed the guys who showed up, everybody. And Oklahoma kids, sorry, showed up late, but I wish I was, I, I tried to set a time to do this, and for some reason, when I set, I, I just got to play with it some more, I got to figure it out better, because it's not, a, it wouldn't, it, I don't know, I don't understand what happened, so I, it's just something I got to work with. What was the outcome? Uh, the 2014 Eagle Rare. I actually do like it. It's more balanced than the 2012 Eagle Rare is here. They're both good. There's not much difference. But the 2014 is a little better balanced. Now, as it stayed in the glass a little longer, the 2012 did improve. So, and neither one are bad. Both are very good bourbons. Don't, we're, we're splitting hairs here. Just so everybody's real clear. We're not, this isn't like, a, this isn't like some mellow corn versus bland stuff. Okay, guys? <laughs> These are very close. It's just a matter of barrel differences and, and, and how it affects the actual spirit. Because we know we're getting the same year, same spirit. Same everything, just a different barrel. And this is how we see how the barrel actually influences the spirit and the effects it has. So, I actually think the 2014 is just a hair bit better than the 2012. And it's a better balance. But they're both still winners in my book. So, hey buddy, great show with me. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, whiskey friend. All right, guys, for real, I do need to get off here now because my wife is in the other room and she's being quiet just for us, and I'm sure she's getting a little impatient now. So everybody, you guys, have a good evening. Remember, the spirit in your glass ain't running from you. Take your time, sip it, and enjoy it, and you'll be better for it, as will we all. So everyone, see you later. i got to go over here to shut it off. If I can.